Hello and welcome to another post-game edition of the Cyclone Insider Podcast and live stream. I am Travis Hines. He is Randy Peterson. We are coming to you from just outside Jack Trice Stadium, which I'm guessing if you're listening to this is unfortunately the scene of another Iowa State loss. The scene of another crime by the offense for Iowa State in a 14-10 to 10 loss to Texas Tech. Randy, I feel like we're kind of running out of things to say about this offense. And then they go and fail in a new way, which they did tonight inexplicably, turning it over on downs twice inside the five-yard line, only needing two yards on five plays to either get a first down or a touchdown in a game where touchdowns were at a premium and could not do it. And they lose the game, and they likely lose out on a chance to get a 5-7 and seven bowl game short of absolutely shocking college football next week at undefeated TCU. What do you got to say, Randy? Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have much to do other than point out what we've been pointing out for months about this offense. Yeah, and, it's, and you'd think, what are we, 11 games into the season? You'd think there'd be some kind of fix here. Um, and, and there's not, you know, I, you, you capsulize those very good, except for your, for one thing I think you missed. I think you missed that they were on consecutive possessions, which, um, oh my God, that, that, that made it a lot worse. Um, I mean, I think you pointed it out at, at one point, the biggest cheer from however many hearty souls were out there. I don't know. It probably was a third full, maybe a little more than a third full, I would say, um, the biggest cheer was when Hunter Deckers was successful, went successful under center for the first time today. And he did that three or four times. Um, that's the biggest, I mean, my gosh, these, it's, 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 I don't know how, like I'm with you. I don't know what else to say about, about the offense. I mean, during those five plays, they lost what a total of six yards, something, something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, like to reset it, they've got, First and 10 from the Tech 11, pick up nine yards, so it's second and one from the two-yard line. Not second and goal, yeah. second and one. All you got to do is get one yard and you get a fresh set of downs. Three straight runs, no gain and loss of yards. Very next possession, your first and goal from the 10, you lose two yards, pick up eight or nine. Your, first, your second and goal, your second and goal from the two, and you can't punch it in. Yeah, and 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 Campbell was he was obviously frustrated after the game, and, and as as well he should be. Um, he he admitted that those two plays cost <laughs> Iowa cost Iowa State the game, or at least were huge contributors. And and he's right. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad no one asked him about the play of the offensive line because he's he's continued to um, mostly defend the offensive line this year. And I guess to his credit, he's a coach. He, he, he you know, he's got to keep those those guys' spirits up. But my gosh, I mean, you've got you've got guys up there. You can't get two yards. I mean, it, it, it's it's you've got Xavier Hutchinson, who was having the game of his life. You've got um, um, Easton Dean, who who you'll see it on the highlight on the highlight reels. He had a 27-yard touchdown pass from Deckers um, at some point, and he hurdled a and he hurdled a defender at the at the five-yard line en route to the end zone. Um, so you've got you've got those two guys. You've, Deckers was even gaining. He had a couple nice nice runs even, um, and Jalen Noel he can catch the ball. We've 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 seen that. And yet they continue to go straight up the gut with um, the play calling. And and what did Matt Campbell say about the play ca- calling, Travis? He says he thought the play calling was pretty good during those um, those possessions. Um, I don't know. I think the, the sooner the season can get over, um, the quicker Iowa State can get, the quicker Campbell can get to making whatever offensive changes he's going to make. Um, during the off season for 2023, because the repeat of this, of what happened this year, is going to be, um, my gosh, you got to put butts in the seats, and that's that could be, that that could be tough. And I'm going to pre- I'm going to I'm going to say right here, right here and now, these changes will not include um, 
you know, what a lot of people think it might include. He's not doing anything. Tom Manning's not going anywhere. Um, um, it's just that they're going to just have to, to change some personnel and go to the portal. I mean, I, I, Travis, you and I talk about what was, you know, between us, just talking about where they're going to go to the portal during the off season. And, and I think it's, I think it's pretty evident and, and they're going to have to do that. It's, um, uh, you, you cannot have a, have consecutive seasons with an offense this abysmal. Yeah, I guess I'm less certain, Randy, than you are of the fact that there won't be staff changes. Because I think, I mean, t- tonight, I think obviously, like we were, this has always been heading in this direction because the offense has been so bad all year long. But to not be able to get over the hump against a not very good Texas Tech team at home. And look bad doing it. I mean, they look bad. They just did. They looked bad tonight. They had penalty. The only thing they didn't have was a turnover, but they went one for five in the red zone and got stuffed when it mattered most in a season where things have just not gone right. And I think it'll be very, I think it's very hard when you have the worst offense in the Big 12 and one of the 25 or 30 worst offenses in the country to do a self eval, to look in the mirror and say, you know what, we're going to run it back. I think that's going to be really, really hard for Iowa State to do. And I think tonight really kind of crystallized that, that this is the reality for this offense. You know, we said it the other day, Randy, you know, if they had games like Oklahoma State last week where you turn it over five times and things are just like clearly it's a young and experienced team growing, you could you know, chalk it up to, you know, run it back. But I think when they've had – such a myriad of issues throughout the season and where you have a game where you basically play clean football other than penalties, which that's a big problem. And you still can't put the ball in the end zone. You can't pick up two yards on five plays. Like I I don't, if you don't take a very, very serious look on how you're doing things, I would be surprised. Now what that means, does that mean Tom Manning? Does it mean position coaches? Does it mean nothing? I, I don't know. But I don't know the, how you can look at what they've done over the last eight games and be satisfied with running it back. We'll see what form that takes because I think there's a lot of different directions they could go from coaching shakeup to system overhaul to the transfer portal like you mentioned. But, man, like it, it was ugly today. Very, very ugly day almost from start to finish. Yeah, and, and – I. I agree with I agree with you about about position coaches. And now all you have to do is look at the look at what positions haven't played well, cons- have not played consistently well over the last however ma- however many years. And and obviously you look at the offensive line. Um, I think that's I think that's some place that that Campbell will will look at. I don't know what about whether- quarterback. I mean, Duckers has not gotten better throughout the year. I think that's pretty clear, right? Right, I know you're right. I don't. I'm not disagreeing with that whatsoever. Um, um, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I, I guarantee. It, maybe that's that's a place where they bring in a, a bring in a portal guy. Um, but I don't think I don't think next year. JJ Cole won't be ready. The Yankee kid, the the the, the recruit, he won't be ready. He won't be ready to play right away. I mean, Rocco Beck, maybe. I mean, I, I honestly, honestly thought that, that that at some point in the first quarter that Rocco Beck was Beck was going to get in the game. Um, that's just the way the way things were going. I mean, Campbell did it last year in the Iowa game with Brock. He put Hunter in, and he obviously did it in the Oklahoma State game in whatever year that was, eighteen, I think. Um, that's where that's where Brock um, became the starter. Was, was his play in in that game so Campbell's not immune to it and I really really thought he'd thought he would do it um, tonight yeah I thought I in that first half like I, I don't know that I would put all of or even most of the blame on Deckers but I thought no no like the, with how bad they looked it was like right. man maybe you just need to make a change exactly you see what to. you got yeah and I don't I'm usually not a big proponent of change for change's sake at the quarterback position. But, I mean, things have just been so rough for so long for that offense that you wonder. And then, I mean, you see this, the switch at kicker in game 11, yeah. which completely blows up, missed two field goals. They got credited for a block, although 
when we were looking at the replay, that looked I, I, I did not a see a block. Yeah, but either way, it was not a very good kick. Um, special teams remains a mess. Now, now, like there's a kicker controversy heading into the off season, or a question <laughs> that kicker heading into the off off season. Like that's not ideal. I wouldn't think. No, it's not ideal. When you've been it's, rolling with a true freshman kicker for ten games, and then game eleven, it's like, yeah, we're going to switch this up. Yeah, and 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 and, and, and oh, by the way, here comes TC or here comes the, the TCU game next week. I mean, my gosh, what a what a uh, a situation for Iowa State to be in. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, what it, what it, what should we call this? A second worst team under Campbell? It's certainly easily. Yeah, I would, I would, think, doubt. I was, I was trying to think of the 18 team. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any question there. So you've got the second worst team under since, since Matt Campbell has been here, which is not, which is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Um, um, Cause from where this program has been, but going to TCU playing the number four team in the country, a team that that's, if you saw today's game, TCU win today, you know, that TCU is destined, you know, they're destined to, to, to do great things and, and which they already have. And there's there's interest in TCU football for a change. So that stadium may be, will be packed. It'll be their senior. Oh, I don't I don't even man, it'll be their senior day. It, it's there is nothing, zero, that that looks favorable for Iowa State in that in that game. And and I can only imagine um, you know, what's 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 gonna happen down there. But uh um yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's a blessing Iowa State won't go to a bowl game. I don't know if that if that's if that's possible. You can get to change, get to making the changes you're going to make. You can um, get on the get on the recruiting trail and and, and start and start uh, you know start working in that direction. Um, start start planning your changes. I don't know, but uh, I, I think I think the sooner. This, this season's over, um, the better. And, and even if they do make a bowl, how many of the guys are going to – how many of the veterans will even play in it? I mean, I wouldn't – that wouldn't shock me if, if they don't. So, um, certainly that's that's not even on the table hardly anymore because of the of the abysmal – of the abysmal offense. And, and that will be game 12. It ain't going to magically get better in game 12, I'll tell you that. No, I don't think so. So I, th- I think that's probably the best place for us to leave it off. Texas Tech 14, Iowa State 10, Cyclones fall to 4-7 and seven overall, 1-7 and seven in the Big 12. One game left remaining for Iowa State in the regular season on Saturday in Fort Worth against number four and undefeated TCU. Be sure to check out DesMoinesRegister.com for all your Iowa State coverage needs, both from tonight's game and for the week ahead which now also includes uh, men's and women's basketball, which are fully underway and both head to uh, Portland this week for a couple of huge tournaments. So keep it locked in. He's Randy. I'm Travis. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.